Hi, I'm Jimmy Houston, and you're watching Angler West Television. When you stand at the mouth of the Smith River in far northern California, it's hard to imagine that only a few short miles upstream, the Smith runs through beautiful, rugged, tree-lined canyons in the heart of Redwood Country. And while only about 20 miles long, the Smith remains California's only major undammed river, as well as one of California's most outstanding steelhead fisheries. Today we're with guide Kevin Brock, who's fishing Don Newman of P-Line and Don's brother, Bob. All right, fish on. Way to go, Don. As you'll notice, Kevin is quite Smith out of river. breath after having to row up that run five or six different times. It paid off, though. We got bit in there once, and I knew there were some fish there. We saw another fish get caught out of there. So we got up in there again, and we hooked him. Good job. Make him jump. <laughs> Just kind of keep your balance as we go over this little rock here. You'll be fine. Just take a little dip. Dip in the boat. Keep your balance. All the fish were kind of on the tail out of that run. God, it's going to be tough to row back up there. No problem. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it about 11 o'clock. <laughs> I don't think it's ready quite yet. We are at the covered bridge. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right, we got here a, a beautiful wild Smith River fish. Just landed at the covered bridge. There was a couple fish caught ahead of us there and we came through and Don got one. Really pretty fish. Really nice, we'll go ahead and grab the pliers. Get this on a good hookup. Right at the top of the jaw. You got it? No. Perfect. Wow, what a fish, huh? Oh, beautiful fish. Nice chrome. You got it? It's a wild one. Oh, it's a wild one, Kevin. So let's let her go. Yeah, let's, let's take some pictures before we let her go. And then this, this means that it's wild. If this is gone, then it's a hatchery fish. It's about an eight pound fish, about an eight pound steelhead. Just chrome bright right out of the ocean. Beautiful fish. That's little, what you come for. A little seal mark right yeah, in the tail. Yeah, but, but really pretty. Full fins, wild fish. Yeah, boy, you hooked him good. Hooked her good. I want to get the pliers to get that out. Nice job, Don. This is a wild hen. We're going to let her go. She's about eight or nine pounds. Beautiful. All right. When you let them go, you always want to make sure they got plenty of energy to take off. So you hold them by the tail, let them wait around, boom, then they're gone. Off like All right. a bullet. Off like a bullet. All right. Way good to go, job. huh? Good job. On the Smith River, right below the forks where the middle and the south fork merge together, one of the historical landmarks on the Smith River is the Covered Bridge. One of the last covered bridges still used today in California. So it's a really neat spot and it's in the Redwood Forest and so it's kind of a little historical spot and another great place to land some big fish right here. A good, good place to fish with high water. So we just landed one here. There were two other boats that got one here. So it's a great start of the morning and the Covered Bridge is kicked out for us. So that's a great way to start. One thing I like to do is once we catch a fish, especially steelhead, you don't get a lot of them and they're big, I like to re-tie the gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to re-tie the gear and show you how we do that. I like to pull out my leaders from a Pips leader box. I've got some pre-tied in here. I'll pull those out. This is 10 pound CFX. I always like to wet my knots before I tie them. With this line here, I like to do six times around, back through, wet the knot, and cinch it down. The key thing about a cinch knot is when you cinch it down, it has to cinch smooth. If it goes smooth, it's a good knot. If it hangs up on the way down, cut it and retie it. That's real important, any type of fishing. You're not supposed to use your teeth, you're supposed to use scissors to cut it off. We're using a number four hook. 
make sure it's sharp. And these have a pre-snelled on them. I pre-tied these already. I push it up and I get a little piece of yarn. I like the bright colored yarn so the fish can see it well. And I just set that yarn right into that loop. So you have this right here. That's your perfect yarn. Now you take your little piece of bait that you pre-cut. I really like to use the Procure Natural on these eggs. Makes them a nice light colored orange. I hook the bait on. Now I grab onto the yarn which pulls your loop up. It serves two purposes. Loop it over the top of the eggs. Cinch it down. Now you have your perfect nickel to dime size piece of bait. Take your puff ball. Take one puff ball. And I like to just to skin hook it on. So it's on the hook. So you got some hook exposed. And that's your bait right there. That's all you need. Fish that, consistently fish that, and you'll catch fish on the Smith River. That's it. All right, Don, let's go get another one, huh? Good. Good job. All right, one of the basic ideas on the Smith Rivers when you're side drifting is do exactly that. You want to side drift. And so this is a perfect example where a spot you want to cast about halfway across the river, maybe three quarters, depending on where you're at. Keep the boat speed the same as the line speed. So you want to cast out, click your bail over right away, and then use your boat and just let it float down. It's really easy, just let it float and keep your line tight off to the side. Two things. What that does is that lets the fish get a hold of the line, hold of the bait real good so you can get a good hook set into them, and it keeps your boat off of the fish, and that's real important. You make long casts, it doesn't spook the fish, so you can continually get bites. What happened uh, just there before we caught that fish, a boat ahead of us caught one. They were side drifting, so they stayed off the fish. The next boat that came down caught a fish. If you work like that, keep the boats on the side, cast towards the middle, and don't spook the fish, then everybody can participate in getting fish, and you'll be more productive that way. And when you're side drifting, always remember, keep it off to the side, keep your line straight off to the side, and drift down the river. One of the things that helps us in higher water and murky water when we steelhead fish is using a high visibility line. Uh, P-Line CX has out a new high visibility line. It's soft, it's great for casting off spinning reels, and it lets the guide be able to see the line as it drifts down. We talked about how important it is to side drift. Well, with this high vis line, you can see it. When you have colored water, dark green or a murky water, the fish aren't affected by the high visibility line and you're gonna catch more fish. You can see it. If the boat operator can see the line, you can see it, you know where you're casting, boom, you're gonna get more fish. So it's a great line, it's a good line on the, pro on the market, and it's soft. It's the CX brand in the high vis. We're going left side here, little upstream, no more than halfway. Right on that edge. Give it just a couple turns, got it. Good casting, you guys. I'm Justin Wall, and I'm Roland Martin, and you're watching Angler West Television. Welcome back to the Smith River. I'm Justin Wolf. After an awesome early morning drift on the Smith, which produced this spectacular wild steelhead, guide Kevin Brock has trailered his drift boat back up to the top of the run in order to make a second pass for the highly prized Smith River steelhead. We're dropping in for our second run this morning or this afternoon. We put in this morning, had a nice drift. We drifted, what, about four or five miles, Kevin? Yeah, about four or five miles down to the outhouse. When the water is high like this, a lot of times just to cover the water, we do two runs. And so it's just important just to get back up and, and do the same water again. We know where there was a couple fish hooked. We hooked a couple fish in a couple different spots. So we'll go at them and see if we can't get another one out of there. One little change I'm going to make for the second run is the water is starting to clear up. So I'm going to go to a, a hot pink color. Uh, I think they'll bite them both. We caught fish this morning on orange, but as the water clears, I like to go back to the pink. Uh, so that's what we're going to use for this afternoon. The main thing is to get a good presentation in front of them, but uh, that hot pink, it's a good steelhead color. So Kevin, going down in the afternoon, uh, are we at any disadvantage? I know this morning there was a few biters. No, as it gets, the day goes on, especially in high water, you can catch these fish anytime. Sometimes we've got some of our biggest fish on our second runs, especially when the water's high and colored like it is. So anytime you're going on your second run and the water's got color to it, you have just an advantage. In fact, we have more of an advantage because we know two or three spots where we saw right. fish hooked. So we can make our time, concentrate on those spots, roll back up on them, because we know there's fish there, try to get another one. So now we know where some are at. We've hooked some, and now we're going to go try to get some more. 
A lot of pressure on you now that we're dialed in, we know where the fish are at. There's no pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if they bite, then we're gonna get them. So. All right, to our left, we've got the middle fork. On the right, we've got the south fork, and they call this the forks right here. And this is all your, in all your history books and all your pictures of the Smith River. This is where it's at right here. This is the, the picture that they take. So this is where the two rivers join together and to create the main stem of the river. A lot of fish hold in here too. I gotta get them out of those willows over there, okay? Woohoo! All right, good job. Okay. When he comes down at you, he's going to come fast. Just keep All him right. tight, okay? All right, Smith River fish. You got one. You guys got lines out? Okay. You got him real close? Okay, thank Okay, thank you. At least you got him in really fast water. Yeah. <laughs> See if he comes back with us here in the corner. He comes in this corner where we're good. Yeah, he does. He goes, you're doing great with him. So much fun when you hook him in that fast water and you got to come through the heat on the oars, real aggressive. Good looking fish right there. Yeah. Oh, what a dandy. Nice. Nice wild buck. That's awesome. Way to go. Way to go, huh? Nice fish. There's a Smith River fish right there. Beauty. Nice fish. Boy, you work so hard for these fish. They're just gorgeous. What a gem. Just make sure they breathe good. If you're going to release them, always take your time. Make sure they've got plenty of energy to go. Make sure they're bleeding good, breathing good out of their gills. Oh, he's ready. He's ready. Are we ready? All right, let's make sure he breathes good. Way he goes, just like that. You know, it's pretty neat to be able to come in California and still fish a river and catch wild fish like that. One of the reasons why we have fish in the river is because of some of our steelhead derbies that we have every year. Uh, they're Rowdy Creek Hatchery Derbies, and you can participate in that. Just go on to Rowdy Creek, and you can find out what time the derbies are. Those, the proceeds go to the hatcheries, and that's what makes this river such a great one, is we all bang together, produce some money for the hatcheries, and we can get fish like that. So. Right on, I hope I see you at one of the derbies.